In today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to use the new sky replacement tool in Photoshop. This tool is awesome for switching in and switching out skies and replacing them with just one click. Let's jump right into it and get started. Hey guys, Ben here from Ben's Guide and welcome to today's video. Now I'm super excited to share with you today this Photoshop sky replacement tool and the reason for this is because it's good. You can actually replace skies in your images in just one click and then you've got further tools inside the sky replacement tool to get your selections absolutely bang on. Now if you haven't yet, just before we jump into the good stuff, hit subscribe and the notification bell to watch more photography, filmmaking and editing videos. Okay guys, let's jump in. So this is the image that we're gonna be working with in the video today. And if you would like to join along step by step, you can do that. I'm gonna put this image available for free download in the description of the video. So a couple of things that you can see with this image, a couple of issues or problems, is that the sky is pretty crap, right? I mean, it's just blown out almost, it's white out, it just doesn't add anything to the image. Now, you can get a real nice foreground in this image with this car, so it would be nice to complement it with a nice sky, and lucky for you, the sky replacement tool is now available to use in Photoshop. So where do we go to actually find this tool? Well, the first thing you need to do is go on up to edit and then come down to sky replacement. Now, what this is going to do is it's just going to take one of the skies and fit it into your image straight away. You can see that that's done that there. Now, I happen to really not like this sky. I think it's probably the worst one in this tool. So we're not going to use this sky. But what we are going to do is we're going to flick through some of the different skies that you've got available in this tool. And then we're going to choose the right one for the image. Now, you can do that by clicking on this down arrow here. And you're going to see a bunch of sky options available for you to use. Now, if for some weird weird reason you don't have this available you can always click on the cog here and then go to append default skies this will then make your options show up right here now you can see we've got blue skies spectacular skies and sunsets but i think for this image you can see by the windows here it's kind of sunny in the distance and it looks quite low the light does so i think some kind of spectacular sky or some sunset is going to work really well so I'm going to click on Spectacular Skies first, and let's just look at some of the options. Now I can pretty much tell you right away I'm not going to be choosing this image, but you can see it doesn't look too bad and it looks quite realistic. And this is just in one click. We've actually done nothing to the uh, sky selection yet to actually make it more realistic. So what I'm going to do is click onto another sky. Don't like that. Let's click on this one. And actually, I really like that. I think that could look really good. So I'm going to choose this sky for this tutorial, and this is the one that we're going to work with. If we just click out of this, you can see that you've got a bunch of options. You've got shift edge, fade edge, you've got sky adjustments, and you've got foreground adjustments. Now, I like to start with this tool by actually just focusing on the sky to start with. So what you do here is you've got the shift edge option and this enables you to shift the edge one way or the other. So if I drag this all the way down, you can see that that's now starting to shift the edge towards the old sky that you had before we changed it or replaced it. Now, if I push it up, you can see that you've now brought in completely the new sky and you haven't got that crossover as much. What I tend to do in these settings is actually put them in the middle and then I kind of choose a little bit either way to edit them from there. So I think I'm gonna push this up just a little bit and choose to bring in the new sky option a little bit more. Now that actually looks really nice. Now if I actually go on to fade edge, this is gonna fade the edge if I bring it all the way down, you can see it fades it towards the new replacement sky. And then if I bring it down this side, you can see it starts fading the edge towards the sky that you had before. Now, this is something that you can actually use to make it look more realistic. So if I just bring this down a little bit, you can see that you start getting like a hard edge here and then it doesn't quite look as realistic. 
So I think it's nice to have a bit of a faded edge, just like this, and bring it up a little bit. And it just kind of blends in with the horizon and just looks a little bit better. Now you might have noticed one thing about this sky and the actual image. This is, the sky is clear, it's in focus, but you can see with these background here or the houses, it's not fully in focus. And that means that the sky is going to stand out as looking a bit unrealistic. Now we're going to take care of that as soon as I've shown you how to use this tool fully. And I'm going to show you how to put a blur on that so it actually blends perfectly with the background. The next options that we want to look at is foreground adjustments. Now this enables you to edit the foreground here and make it look like the sky. Because as you can see at the moment, you've got kind of like a gray or a blue U on this, and then it actually stands out from the sky and doesn't look spot on. So how we're going to do this is we're going to bring the lighting adjustment down a little bit, and this is going to adjust the foreground to make it darker. Now I'm going to use the color adjustment, and when I push this up, this is going to blend some of the color in the sky with the foreground, and this is the the tool or the slider which I think can make some of the most difference towards making it look realistic. So if I just push this up, you can see that now we're really starting to get that blend of colour in and it looks really spot on there. Okay, I think that looks good there and it's starting to blend a lot more naturally with the sky. Now we do still have the issue with this sky and the houses, but we're going to take care of that and we're going to put a bit of a blur on that in just a moment. You do have a couple more options here which are worth looking at. You've got brightness, which you can see if I bring that down, it's going to affect the brightness of the sky and make it darker. If I push it up, it's going to make it ridiculously bright. But if I just bring it down in the middle, like I did with the other options, I can just gently push that up a little bit and assess if I want it lighter or darker. Now I think just a little bit darker is quite nice. So I'm just going to drop it down a few numbers and about there looks pretty good. Finally, if you want to add a temperature change, you can make it look warmer just by pushing that up or you can bring it down to make it look a bit cooler. Now I'm actually going to leave this pretty much where it was because I think it looks really good that way. And there we go. Now finally, to get this finished look, what you need to do is output this into Photoshop the option to do that is down here. Now you've got new layers or you've got duplicate layer. What I'm going to do is click on new layers and this is going to give me each individual layer that I've edited. And this means that I can work on this further outside of the sky replacement tool. So click on that, click OK, and then that loads into your window here. Now the brilliant thing about this is you've got a group which is a sky replacement group and it's got each layer in that we made changes to. So if you want to go in and further edit these in each layer, you can do. And that just means that you can refine your adjustment that little bit more. Now I'm actually really happy with the way this looks, but we do have to take care of this sky here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a stamp visible layer. Press Shift, Control, Alt and E, and then you're going to get a copy of everything on this layer here. Now I'm going to turn this layer into a smart object. Right click and then press convert to smart object. The reason I'm doing this is because if you put a filter on like a blur and then you change your mind and think, hey, this blur is not enough. I need more blur. You then have the option to click into this and change the blur instead of going all the way back into it and then redoing the effect. So what I'm going to do now is go up to filter, come down to blur and choose Gaussian blur. Click on the image and I'm going to see what kind of blur I want on the sky. Now you can see it's blurring the whole image. We're going to take care of that in a minute, just so it's the sky. But I think somewhere around about 9.2 is pretty good. Click OK. And now what I want to do is stick a mask on this layer, Control I, and that's going to hide the whole of the effect or the whole of the blur from my image. This means that I can now paint over the sky just with the blur effect. So you've got to make sure you've got your brush tool selected. Make sure you're on white down here. And now you can simply start just painting over the sky and bringing that blurred effect into the image. 
Now this is quite a rough selection. You can do this neater if you want by using something like the pen tool, but this is just a quick selection so that I can get through this video. And right, what we've got now here is we've got this lovely blurred sky and it looks absolutely spot on. Now, if you did think the blur is not enough, what you can simply do is just jump in by double clicking on the Gaussian blur because we've got this smart filter on now. And then you can bring this up or down and change the amount of blur in the image. I'm going to leave it on about 9.4. I think that looks good. And click OK. Now that is exactly how you use the sky replacement tool in Photoshop to replace skies quickly and get some really awesome results. I really hope you've enjoyed the video today, guys, and you're going to now use this sky replacement tool to save yourself a ton of time. If you've got images or pictures which don't have particularly good skies. It's also going to help you with things like clients where you've taken pictures, you can't go back and then retake them. But what you can do is you place the sky in Photoshop and get some really good results. Now, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this tool. Is it something you're going to use? Is it something you're quite impressed with? Let me know down below in the comments. Whatever you do for the rest of the day, guys, make sure it's a good one and I'll see you in the video next time.